Hello and welcome to Behold the Lamb Presents. I am Chris Shelton, your host, and as always, we are so glad that you have chosen to take this time with us today in the study of God's Word. Today's message is entitled Great Falls of Fire, Part Two with Pastor Kenny Shelton. In part one, I announced that this would be a two-part series, but during Pastor Kenny's first message, he requested that we change this two-part series to a three-part series, so that is just what we have done, and rightly so. Even in three programs, we will be but barely scratching the surface to see what is about to take place in this world. During this message, Pastor Kenny will be examining scripture, spirit of prophecy, and world events that signal more judgments and more trumpets will continue to escalate in frequency and intensity throughout the world, listen, until the coming of Christ. He will be addressing prophetic visions of scripture and spirit of prophecy that are yet to be fulfilled and how these great events will affect those who are living upon the earth during this time. So without further discussion, let's join Pastor Kenny Shelton today for this important message. But first, to prepare our hearts for this time of study, let's visit the 3ABN studios and listen to Sandra Interman along with her friends as they present a song entitled, Faithful Men. Thanks for joining us once again here at Behold the Lamb Ministries. We're glad you joined us here for this hour of study. This will be the second part of the series that we're doing. Actually, we're going to be doing three parts because there's so much information that I think is vital. I want to call it present truth, and we need present truth. Great balls of fire. What does that mean? There's the world will go in one direction. We're going to go in another, right? 
we're going to go in another that's bi fulfilling Bible prophecy. We're going to be looking at it very closely uh, you know, in the Word of God today. And we're going to start naturally like we always do by prayer. We need more prayer because the enemy is determined to keep a lot of our folks at home. They're tired. They're worn out. Or they're whatever. I can guarantee, Don, is it okay if I do this? They're not any more tired than you or me. Isn't that right? But you know, we believe that time is short. And we believe that every opportunity that God gives us, we need to make sure we use it to His honor and to His glory. It may be the last time that you'll be able to support, as it were, and give and do. And the last time that I may be in the pulpit, I do not know. But I want to have the grace of God. I always said, if I go, I'd like to go while I'm in the pulpit. Isn't that right? Doing God's will. And that's what we want to do today. But we're going to talk about this most important part, Great Balls of Fire, part two. And I'm going to pray once again. The devil is bound and determined, what? That this does not go out. You have to be more determined to say, I'm going to pray until it does. Until we have warned the world. So pray with me. Pray hard that the Holy Spirit will have his will and way today. I'm going to kneel. Father in heaven, thank you for this privilege that we have and the promises that you've given us in your word. You said your word would not return void. We're going to claim that today. We're going to hang on that today. You promised where two or three are gathered together in thy name, you would be here in our midst. I believe that. Holy Spirit is going up and down the aisles, searching every heart, every mind, every life to see where we are at in our walk with you. And as this message goes forward, may it go forward with power and wisdom, bring conviction on our hearts. Lord, are we doing all that we can do for you? Thank you for loving us. Thank you for that promise that you're going to be here with us in Jesus' name. Amen. It'd be good if we turn and read the passage of Scripture in Joel chapter 2. Now, remember, what I want to do, this is, this is part 2, so if you miss part 1, once again, you may want to call the ministry or whatever and, and get that first part because there's a lot of foundation that's in there that helps to make more sense part 2. So what I always try to do is spend five or six, seven minutes on part one to give us an idea of where we were at last time we studied and then take off from there. Joel chapter two, verses one through three. Remember, you might say Joel chapter two has to do with the time in which Joel lived and prophecies in. Absolutely. But I can guarantee you it has just as much bearing and more so on the people that are living in this hour that we're in right now. It pertains to God's last day people. Now, again, we're looking at things that we're going, to, we're going to try to make a difference, as it were. There's things that will come, judgments of God that's coming in. What does that just mean, things that come from heaven? Does it possibly mean, I'm just going to throw it out. You can throw it back if you want to. Could it possibly mean, as we look at some of these things, could it possibly mean that there might be a somewhat a nuclear exchange before Jesus comes? Just think about it. It's too much, Brother Herb. It's too much for most people. And many people will say right to begin with, we're going to turn it off because, oh my, conspiracy theory. If you read the Word of God, come on, folks. If you read the Word of God, there's some things in here that really indicate that some big disastrous things are going to happen. And even Spirit of Prophecy points out some of the places are going to happen. And you know what? Some of those things have been kept quiet. Listen to me carefully. A little over one, oh, interesting, 120 years. Because some of the things, I'm going to read a couple of quotes today, that are new, as it were, from the Ellen White estates that have been kept secret for a little over 120 years. Now, why? It should be ours. It should be anybody that wants it. Isn't that right? But it just makes sense that some things are going to happen that we need to be well aware of, not to frighten you, but to say, God, we need you, right? We need you to cover us, to shield us, and prepare us for that latter rain that we may give this message the way God wants us to. Joel chapter 2, let's just read those verses. And again, look at some kind of dual application of some things. Joel chapter 2, 1 through 3. The Bible says, blow ye the trumpet where? In Zion. Where Zion means where? Would that be God's church, God's people, any, any, anybody around the world that says I'm God's person? Just blow the trumpet in Zion. Wake up the people. Notice this. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. See, some people will see this and they'll turn right around and say, why are you blowing the trumpet? Why are you making so much racket? Why don't you preach about something else? Let's do some love messages. What do you say? Let's do some mercy. And we love, praise God, everything here is built on love. That's the foundation of it. But also, do, that, do we dismiss the warnings because, you know, it's love? 
we, God loves us. He warns us, right? That's a love message as far as I'm concerned. That's a message of grace. That's a message of long-suffering. God said over and over and over and over, I tell you, I tell you. The Bible said, blow that in trumpet. It says, the inhabitants of the land tremble. Uh, I wonder how many of us really are trembling. We get up every day, everything's just got whole hum, the same old thing that's going to go on and on and on. Our knees almost should be smolting one against the other. That's maybe how close we are to the coming of Jesus. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it's nigh at hand. A day of what? There's a lot more than to this than the time of Joel. There's a day of darkness and gloominess and a day of clouds, thick cloud darkness and morning spread upon the mountains. Notice this. A great people, a strong, a strong people, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be what? Any more after it, even to the years of many generations, verse 3. Notice this. It says, a fire devoureth before them, behind them. Wow, a flame burneth. The land is as a garden of Eden before them. Right? It means beautiful, isn't that right? But it says, after some of these things take place, what's going to happen? Behind them is a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. If I just read verse 15, if you allow me to do that, in uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 15, it just says, again, blow the trumpet in, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. So we come today, it's not just a, it's, be happy inside, God is in control, things are going to work out exactly what he says, as somebody I know is going to get our clock ready after a while. If you don't, I'm going to go for several hours. I feel like going for a long time today. If you don't fix that thing, I'll just keep going. Is that okay to say that, Paul? Is that all right? It's not a threat. It's just like I, Kenny knows I will. That's right. There's a lot to say. Isn't that right? Praise God. That's right. No, it's good. So there again, you see, blow the trumpet in Zion. There's something that's going to go on. Something's going to take place. Now, notice this. So I'm going to repeat a couple of things that I read in the first part. And this is, will set the foundation once again. Early Writings 33 says this. At the commencement of the time of trouble. Is anybody with me? The commencement, notice this, of the time of trouble here mentioned does not refer to the time when the plagues shall begin to be poured out. What does it mean, church, when the plagues are poured out? What does that mean to the world? Somebody say probation is closed. Not another soul will come to, he that is righteous will be righteous still. He that is filthy will be filthy still. Not another soul will be saved in the kingdom. So evidently we're talking about then a time of trouble that's coming on this earth, but we have to make a difference between those plagues when they're poured out after probation closes and those, those uh, the troubles sometimes at these commencement of the little time of trouble is going to be, in, really in our estimation, it's, it's, it's pretty big. It's more than most of us think that's going to happen. We call it the little time of trouble. That means before probation closes, which simply means God's saying to you, I want to get your attention. If you do not see this in these studies, bless your heart, I'm going to go over it and, Jan, I'm going to go over it and over it and over it and over it until we all say, I get it. I've got it. There's a reason for these things that's going to happen that have already happened that will increase, and God even pinpoints some things, even where some of these judgments are going to fall and what's going to take place. And if we do not listen, I'll tell you, it's going to be sad news for us. Remember, a little time of trouble before probation closes. After that is a big time. Are we still all right? A big time of trouble after probation closes, seven last plagues fall. Remember, that is when the enemy has basically taken over the world. Did, did, did you get that? He's done what? He's basically taken over the world. I look at some of the stuff, and I, I was going to jot something down. I don't know if I did it where we had it or not. But the enemy will have things just about the way that he wants them, as he did at the day that Christ right, walked upon the earth. Jesus, when Jesus came on the earth, the enemy had things just about the way he wanted them. Are you still with me? And Jesus came to set it straight. Aren't you glad? Jesus came to say, all right, the devil says he's won it. I'm taking it back. By the grace of God, right? Calvary was before him. So I'm telling you, the enemy's saying, I've got, remember, if, if, if the demons of hell are in charge, what do you think this world's going to be like? Somebody pray. Now, we've made a difference, so we got that part, right? Little time of trouble, big time of trouble. Notice this, what I'm reading here. 
The commencement of the time of trouble here mentioned does not refer to the time when the plague shall begin to be poured out. But a short period, a what? A short period just before they are poured out while Christ is in the sanctuary. Or which, which sanctuary? We know there's not the earthly, the heavenly sanctuary. Isn't that right? At that time, while the work of salvation is closing, the work of what? Trouble will be coming on the earth and nations will be angry, Matthew 24, 7. Now, when we say that, all you have to do is read the he, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, uh, Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 7, 8 and 9, and you'll see Christ is our mediator in the heavenly sanctuary. Isn't that wonderful? He's made his last stop. He's pleading our cases right now. But if you don't give him your life, he cannot plead your case. He cannot do it. He wants to do it. Right, his blood is sufficient. He died for every man, woman, and child on the face of this planet. They would just say, oh, Lord, I want you to plead my case. Oh, Lord, I need you. Here's, here's the scars, he says before God. People say, well, I'll stand and I'll plead my case. You cannot plead your case. Jesus must plead your case to the Father. The Father will not listen to me. Oh, say it. Come on. Do you hear me? He's not going to listen to me. He's listening to his son. And the son has to say, he's mine. And when you say he's mine, the Father says, that's good enough for me. Man, that's wonderful. But you have to just, you have to make that choice. You have to make that decision. And some of you are dilly-dallying around, wasting your time and wasting God's time, wasting the planet's time by not doing what we should be doing. Is that, is that okay to be clear enough, Kenny? I want to be because there are no excuses. You're, remember, Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. That's it. He who is not with me is against me. That makes it pretty plain. Is that right? So if we're not fighting with him and on his side, then we are against him. That means if you haven't decided, you are against him. Especially if you know what is right and you know the truth and you're still fool. I'm sorry, fooling around. Fooling around has to stop. The hour that we're living in, oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, Hebrews 9, 24, right? Which were the figures of the true, but he's now entered into, the Bible says what? In the heavenly, oh boy, now to appear for God for us, them it says, us. He's entered, and right, in the presence of God for you, for me. Man, let's not, let's not. Let's not disappoint him. He can't do it unless you say, I want to be yours, Jesus. I feel like I'll make a mess of it. God says, "That's right. come on, I'll help you. I've made a mess all my life. It's okay, come on. All I've did is the wrong things. It's okay, come on. So there's no excuse for us not coming along. Let him, he's going to fight the battle. He's going to win it. But you have to be on his side. Hebrews 8, true. We have a high priest who is a minister, oh, don't you like that, of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. That's the heavenly. People, most Christians in the church today say, well, there's no such thing as a heavenly sanctuary. You are missing a blessing. You don't even know where Jesus is at. He's on the right hand of the Father. What is he doing in the heavenly sanctuary? Thy way, O oh God, is through the sanctuary. Where do I know where Jesus is at today? Huh? You study the, you st well, we've never studied the earthly sanctuary. We don't know anything about it. Most churches never have. Why not? Because the devil's making sure that you don't. Because it says, thy way, O oh God, the way to God is through the sanctuary. See what they did through the earthly sanctuary. You will know where Christ is at. He's entered into the most holy place, the last stop. He did that in 1844. It's a proven fact. History proven, right? Daniel 8 and 9, just read them, right? We know. He doesn't want to surprise us. He wants you to know where he's at and what he's doing, pleading our cases. Because, what is it, Hebrews 7, 25? It's because he ever liveth to make intercession for us. What did he do? He ever liveth. The purpose of Jesus Christ, he lives right, to intercede for us. He's the only one that can do it. There's no one else can do it, right? All the universe, all the angels, everything, no one can do it. Only Jesus I'm telling you, that's beautiful when you think about it. He ever liveth, Kenny, to make intercession for you. That's why he came. I mean, that's just such a beautiful message. 
But it says right here, before Jesus comes, there's going to be a time of trouble on this earth. No, you haven't seen it yet. You think COVID was bad. Oh, we haven't seen anything yet. You read a little more early writings, you can read 85 and 86, Matthew chapter 24, the whole chapter, especially verse 27, it said there's going to be a coming and a fighting, and the nations are going to be angry with one another. They're going to be talking about war and nuclear war. They're going to be talking about all kinds of thermonuclear war, all kinds of wars. And, and, and they're not being secret about it. Remember, remember, when there's talk about it, and it goes on and on and on, that, to me, that would be God's way of saying, listen, church, listen, people, they are talking about it. Oh, that can never happen. Because Don't fool yourself. There's going to be some uh, things that's going to happen in this world that you, you may wish you were not born. Uh, we almost did that during COVID, and that was really nothing compared to what it's going to be. I'm not happy to say that. I wish we could talk about something else. But where are we doing our job? Let me give you a little something here. We read Evangelism 29. It says here, notice, a very impressive scene was presented before me. I seemed to awake from sleep but was not in my home. From the evident windows I could behold, notice this, a terrible, oh, boy, a terrible. They talk about a scene of fire. Fire going on. They call it, and there's what she said. Sermon title. She said, I saw great balls of fire. Wow. Yeah, I saw great balls of fire. What were they doing? They were falling upon houses, and from these balls, fiery arrows were flying in every direction. It was impossible to check the fires that were kindled. Many places were being destroyed. And listen, the terror of the people was indescribable. It either is or it isn't. You, you choose what it's going to be. It either is or it isn't. These are things that was going on. Now, we can see this. Now, notice. I think we can see this. Before the close of probation and the seven last plagues are poured out, the judgments then of God will be falling. Now, I believe this. Listen carefully. I believe they will fall on the cities first. See, before we hate, oh, let's be careful. Let's not say that. No. Why not say it? Is that not where the most wickedness is at right now? Just common sense. Where is it at? Is it in the farmlands or the little... It's in the cities. We know that. What do you think we're seeing for the last several years? Everything's happened in the, in the cities. It's in New York. It's in Chicago. It's in St. Louis. It's in... You see all these places here that we see all this stuff developing here. So I believe that the judgments are going to fall. Some of the things we will see is going to fall in the cities first... That's why God's people are warned, move out of the cities while you can. See, it makes more and more sense to me because remember what Sodom and Gomorrah, as you well know, it. God said, "What? come and get his people. Get out of there. It's going to be destroyed. And it's sad of all the thousands, the tens of thousands of people who live there, there's only a few that went out and the angels had to help them out. You know. Wow. So God's saying, get out of there quick because something's going to happen. The city's first. Now, why do I say that? Because I'm thinking, I believe, and I, I don't want to beat around the bush about it, there's going to be a Sunday law before too long, National Sunday Law. This brings about a mess. But after their Sunday law, then the judgments really begin to fall. Probation's not closed just yet. Are you still with me? But that, that means that, listen, that, that means that there's still opportunity to come to him but what people still refuse to come to him, and God says, I'm going to get their attention. Stay with me on this. God says, I'm going to get their attention. And so it begins to fall, as it were, in the cities. We'll read something in just a moment where you'll see it. See, not every city at once, but it begins to fall, and the world is tension. Is, oh, my, oh, my. It's going to, if that does not work, another city and another city and all cities before it's over because most will refuse it. And they're going to look for people to blame, by the way. Review and Herald article that was written in 1906, God's Purpose. Now, remember, why have these destructive judgments? Man, we don't need it. We've got enough problems in the world. But notice these destructive judgments, the time of God's destructive judgments are what? is a time of mercy for those who have had 
have not had the opportunity to learn what is truth. You have had the opportunity. And then some of us, we've had it, and we, well, we can't find time to come to church. Well, we can't find time to do anything to, to, to get this gospel preached into the world. These destructive judgments are for those who have not had the opportunity to hear and know what truth is. Because remember, when a destructive judgment or, let's say, a health issue, may I say that? I know when it hit myself, it made me think. It made me really think. Say, oh my, wow. Life is just like a vapor. You're here one day and you may be gone the next. Then what? The Bible said, you live, what? And then, there's, then the judgment. It's appointed to man wants to die and then the judgment. And whether you want to be in it or not, you will be. Isn't that right? I mean, that's interesting. It makes you think. And so these judgments come. Remember, for those who have not had the opportunity. And so I say it's just, it's criminal. For those of us who have been around in the movement for years and years and years and still dilly-dallying around, not knowing what to do or when to do it. Is that okay? Roy, I just feel like it today. I'm sorry. I just can't, I can't help myself. Because I've seen so much fiddle-diddling around. Is that okay to say that too? Fiddle-diddling around. I know people hate to hear that, but I, that, that's just kind of how I feel myself. You know, I do that when we was working to do construction. Quit diddling around. Let's get it done. Is that okay, Greg? Get her, he not, get, get her done. This work needs to be done. There's a, there's a quote in Prophets and Kings that I thought just, it jar, if it don't jar you, then you're not going to be jarred. Don't worry about getting jarred. Page 183 and 84 says, Satan says, Whew. for fear, remember we talked about Sunday laws, judgments falling down, you know, Remember, he hates those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Two identifying marks of God's last day church. You can go to church on Saturday all you want, but you have to have a spirit of prophecy. That's what the Bible says. That's what it says. Satan says, for fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth oh, will be holy under my dominion. The enemy says the earth will be. Remember, all it's going to take, he says, is for you. And notice what it is. is it food and, I don't have any clothing. I don't have any food. Oh, Lord, I give up. You don't love me anymore. You don't care for me. Where's my food? Somebody with me. We've all been probably there at one time or the other, and we might have missed one meal. And all of a sudden, we're ready to give up our faith and our friends and turn our family. <laughs> you see, you know what I mean? Go to extremes on it. I'm hungry. I mean, that's a real thing. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying here, the enemy says, that, that's all I have to do. They don't have to run the streets. They don't have to be, oh, be careful, Kenny. Just stop there. They don't have to be running around doing all kind of different things. All they have to do is just want a little bit of clothes because they're cold. Or Yeah, we all do. And we want food to fill our little tummy so we're feeling good that we all do. He said, but they'll, they, they'll, they'll follow what? They'll, they'll transgress the law of God and the world will be wholly mine. Oh, can't you realize when it's holy his, what he wants to do? Oh, and this quote tells me, listen, this quote was just released. Now, listen to me. Now, I'm not trying to complain. I, Lord only knows, but I, I'm, I get frustrated about some things. Why was not this quote, I'm a believer in the spirit of prophecy. The Bible talks about it. Isn't that right? What's it, what is what the Bible talks about? Some of you don't, well, I'm not sure. I'm not if you're not sure, you need to get sure. Get in or get out. Really, that's what God says. He's not with me. He's against me. So you're not going, I can't take you because you, you, you won't follow. The dragon was wroth with what? With the woman, the church, and went to make war with the remnant of the seed who do what? Keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Revelation 19, 10. It's the spirit of prophecy is what the Bible says. In other words, the spirit of prophecy, God's last day people will be prophesying things that are taking place, things that have taken place, things that will take place. And it'll be truth. They're not going to hit and miss about it either. I'm not trying to be, I, just, I want you to feel it. That's the identifying mark 
of God's church. It makes sense all through the Bible. Has he not had his prophets and prophets all through the Bible to lead people? Why would he not in the last days? And it's very interesting. The Bible says, okay, that's good. We're going to have it. It's a gift. New Testament talks about until Jesus shall come. All, but we have to try the spirits to see what they are. I almost said Joseph Smith. They, people keep writing me and say, you need to try him out. I'm not trying him out. I've tried him out. And he's proved to be a false prophet. Why? Because he prophesied things, lots of things, and he's about 40% correct. He can't be a prophet. Deuteronomy says a prophet of God, when he, when he prophesies something, it comes to pass. Isn't that right? If it not, he's a false prophet. Kenny always tells me the truth. I say, man, he's a truthful man. If he's lying to him, I say, oh, Kenny's a liar. Still love you, bro. You're not meaning that, you know. Isn't that, isn't that the way it is? I mean, did men get off on that, but I... As maybe we should. So, but anyway, this comes back to this quote I'm getting ready to re uh, read is released in 2015. Right? It, listen, it was written in 1902. Who has been keeping it back? Can I say that in frustration? Why? Because some people's in charge of some of this estates and the writings, and they decided to let it go. But maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe because part of it here, I don't want you to miss all of this, is because some of these things that are happening, some of the people in vision, some of the people were saying, this, listen, this was what we've been talking about. Did you get it? This is what we've been, people haven't been talking about what we're talking about here, not lately. I mean, there's several people who have done this study, but it's not something you hear all the time or something we just talk about. They're saying, We've, we've been talking about this. Remember, Jesus would have us to talk about it and present it before it happens. So maybe some of these things are brought out at this time so that we talk about it a little bit more because then it's going to happen. Just come on. Think about it. That makes sense? But 2015, this was written in manuscript 233, 1902. That, remember, a little over 120 years. Kind of interesting about the... Is anybody... Relating anything to it? No. And I'm going to read another one. It was almost exactly 120 years that was released. New release, we call it. Here's what it says. Just listen. The wrath of God will come. Listen. The wrath of God will come upon all cities. Didn't say a few. Did you get it? It either is or it isn't. Will come upon all cities, upon dwellings, and upon large buildings. Listen. Not all at once, but one, listen, after another. And if, here, remember what the judgment's for? To get the attention of the people, right? Because we've just been right, spewing out the word of God. We don't need it anymore. We don't worry about the law of God. We don't have to keep the command. We don't have to do anything. Blah, 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 blah. God said that's enough is about enough. And I'm going to make it plain and people's going to be able to see it. And there's going to be a change or this is going to be it. Notice what it says. Not all at once, but one after another. And if, listen, and what? If the terrible punishment in one city does not cause the inhabitants of other cities to be afraid and seek repentance, their time will come. Did you get it? Isn't that the way it's always worked in Scripture? Judgments of God would fall in that right? To do what? To get your attention and my attention to get it right. And if it doesn't, then it goes on and goes on. Here's what. Over, ooh, overwhelming judgments are determined upon, notice, all people, now wait, all people who have had light before them, notice this, oh boy, oh boy, and in the word of God, but who have not followed it. The judgments are going to fall. People have had, we had the opportunity, have we not? The Word of God is out there. You can buy the Bible anywhere you want to. You hear the church is on every corner. I almost said, for heaven's sakes, I better not say that. I get in trouble. Yeah. But they haven't followed it. Now, here comes another release. I can talk more about it. Remember what it says. Why it's coming. I, I want to make sure we get it. The judgment, boom, in this city. And they're almost like nothing may be left. Big balls of fire. Boom, Something happening. 
and that that doesn't bring. In other words, it's, it's bigger. It's not a little backyard fire. It's not get your marshmallows out and... Isn't that right? It's more than a marshmallow roast. Really. It's going to get the attention of the world. And God said, I want to get the attention so that, they, that the judgments don't have to fall anymore. God doesn't delight in that. But he wants to get the attention of the world. If it don't, it's going to follow with another and another. This released in 2015. Notice this. Manuscript 154, written in 1904. Mary, it's just come out almost by 120 years. Are you still with me? Ooh, prophecy. Notice it. While I was in, uh-oh, here we go. Let's, I'm going to talk about something now that has not taken place, but will take place as I stand here. Maybe not in my time. I, don't, I do not know. There's no time given, but I can guarantee you it's going to happen. There's reasons for it. Wish that. Honey, can we do four? No. Okay, no, I'm sorry. I need to hurry. I need to hurry. Listen to this, a vision. I was in Nashville, Tennessee. Some of you read it a few times. But remember, this just came out in 2015. It's been hidden, as it were, for over 120 years. Well, you've read little things about it give you an idea. This starts making it a little bit clearer and clearer and clearer. Don't think it's not going to happen. Don't ever think for a moment. A scene was opened before me. A great ball of fire seemed to fall from heaven, and from it went forth flashes of light. Notice this. These flashes of light would strike a building. The building would burn like tinder, tinder which is something that just ignites. Explosion. And then I heard someone say, listen, I heard someone say, I knew this was coming. These are the judgments of God that I knew were coming. And someone else looks around and the question, you knew? Did you get it? You knew? Said another. You were my neighbor. Why did you not tell that these things were coming? Why did you not warn others? When some big disaster like that, you would say the same thing and I would too. If my home's blown up and everything's blown off the face, as it were, maybe you're alive. You're looking, you knew this. Why didn't you tell me? Maybe we would have listened. Maybe we wouldn't. That's not the issue. God never said it. He said, tell them. Warn them. Blow a trumpet. This is happening. Listen. Oh, boy. You knew. Why didn't you warn us? Now, this next thing I'm going to read sheds more light on what I just read. So pay close attention. Again, a new release. 2015, this is written in a, it's called a place called Oakwood, page 138. Here's what it says. There was a scene presented to me. It was the night before the Sabbath. What would that be? Friday night. I looked out of the window, and there was an immense ball of fire that had come from heaven. Oh, boy. And it fell where they were casting buildings with pillars. Especially the pillars were presented to me. Think about it. There's a reason for that. Listen. And it seemed as if the ball came, notice this, right to the building and crushed it. And they saw it was branching out and branching out and enlarging. And they began to cry and mourn and mourn. And they began to wring their hands. And they thought, oh, some of our people stood by saying, notice this, well... It's just what we have been expecting. Listen carefully. It is just what we have been talking about. And they repeated, it's just what we've been talking about. And again, you knew it, said the people. You knew it and never told us about it. There was such agony on their faces, such agony in their appearance, uh, Letter 217 said, we knew that the judgments, notice, of God were coming upon the earth. Notice, we did not know that they would come so soon, others said. You knew. Why then did you not tell us we did not know? Wow. Sound the alarm, it says, in my holy mountain. You remember that? Warn my, 
people. What are we talking about here? We're talking about a building in where? Nashville, Tennessee. And the focus came upon, she said, I, there was casting of the building. They was building something. But the, my attention was there was many pillars. At that point in time, they were building quite a few buildings and all those buildings in Nashville that had a lot of pillars. Do you remember? But they were doing them in a cheap way when they were building or something that was the temporary things they were building. And later they come down. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And when they establish them, the more. But it's very interesting, that place that we'll talk about in just a, a minute or so right now. Just while well, we have, still have time, I'll show you a picture of the building that I believe one of these days is going to certainly be destroyed. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Is somebody still with me? Anybody asleep? Wake up. You see it pretty well from there? You can pass it around and get it later. It's kind of interesting. And then I'll get into it a little bit, something like that. In the middle of this building, and I'll say it two or three at a time, there is a 42-foot statue in the middle of that building, paganism, outlandish. In the middle of that building, and I'll explain some of that stuff here in a moment so that you have an idea of why those balls of fire may hit this place. Hmm. You knew it? Letter 217, we knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth, but we did not know they would come so what? You read this before. We, did, we, we didn't think they'd come quite so soon. Others said, you knew, why didn't you tell us so? I sound the alarm. Manuscript 126, 1906, I saw the whole heavens lighted up. There were balls that looked like fire, fireballs falling. And the balls looked as if they were full of arrows going every direction. Whatever they, they struck, there was great calamity. Houses were set on fire. No human effort could extinguish the flame. The earth quaked. Homes were falling with a crash. I heard the distressing screeching, notice this, and praying. Did you get it? Praying. There was confession and confusion everywhere. Confusion everywhere. I said to someone, do, do look. Do look. That is the most striking representation of what will be in the last days. And then was given this. Read Revelation 18. Voices were proclaiming the events taking place. Read and understand Revelation chapter 19. Because what you read will surely come to be. Read Revelation 21. There were voices at this time proclaiming the words of, notice this, of, of these chapters. With great power, the message was given. God said he's going to establish his people in the last days and, and Holy Spirit power is going to be given where well, the message will be given with such power that people just can't turn away from it. They're bound and determined to have to hear it. Then they'll have to choose what they're going to do. Man, you say, well, why, why this judgment? This building, the Parthenon, does anyone know that in Nashville? You ever been there, some of you? Well, don't be, huh? At some, at some point, you've been there several times, haven't you? Well, be careful, it doesn't eat you up. Many, many atheists go to, go to this building. And you know what they do when they go to the building? When Basically, the, one guy wrote an article, he said, when no one's looking, I kneel down in front of this image. And I begin to pray to this image. I pray for my family and my children that we'll have the wisdom that this image has. Interesting, as you look in Scripture, what do you see always that God has dealt with when it comes to the paganism and, you know, right? All these, where they had all these images and idols and things stored up. When God's people came in, right, in, 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 in leadership, they destroyed them all because God doesn't want them. The false doctrine, false teaching, paganism, the devil has shown up. Interesting. Now, let me just say a few things about this building. Why? The kind of, what? This Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee. Why is it mentioned specifically? Could it be? Is it okay if I just say, could it be? And you, you decide, question mark. Here is this building in the middle of the music city. 
a place that people look up to and think how wonderful it is. But here's something right in the middle of it. Not only that, there's other things that go on there. You might want to look a few things up. I've often wondered why they have this, it looked like a block or maybe two blocks long of a pe- big pe- of, a, of a dragon. Hmm. The dragon was wroth with the woman. Who's the dragon? Oh, the devil. Hmm. Could it just be or is it something for the kids to play on? Is it, uh, the devil doesn't do anything by accident. He's throwing things out there. Middle of Music City, this Parthenon is a, is a full-scale replica of the original one in Athens, Greece. We know, yeah, we're talking about to the limit. They've measured it all. It's full-scale in Athens, Greece. It was, beg your pardon? Yes, molded, absolutely, yeah. It was uh, it built in Nashville in 1897. But it was temporary the way they built it. Remember what she said? I saw my attention went to the, the casting of these pillars. They were building them not out of the real, it's like we do stone and masonry and stuff, just, you know, stuff that would just last for a few years and then it's going to tear it down in other buildings. But then they decided that was a temporary cost of like of $1 million then, the original structure. And then we find out the permanent one was put up in 1925 to 1931, and then updated, beautified, as they say, in 1991, uh, uh, in 2001, and they spent $12 million on that. Notice this, we look at this thing, oh, this, this Parthenon, it was, it, was, it was dedicated to the goddess of Athena. It was dedicated to the goddess of what? Pagan God. Isn't that right? Yeah. Her statue is the replica. Remember this. In Nashville. Now remember, it stands, they say, 13, over 13 meters high, which is over 42 feet. 42 feet. She holds another little like an angel, as it were, she call, in her hand over here. You know what I can't? That little angel there is six feet tall. It looks like nothing in the hand, but this is 42, over 42 feet. Now, remember what this thing is, regardless of how many people visit or try to say it's some kind of religious thing. It's paganism. Oh, absolutely. No. Now, it's interesting on this because it says here, uh, she appears in full armor. Kind of interesting. Now, all gold. In the right hand, she holds a, a the goddess of that goddess, we took six feet, of victory. It says victory. She wears a helmet decorated with mythical animals. In her left hand, interesting, she has a spear and a shield. Now notice, I think it's they call it Medusa, M-E-D-U-S-A, Medusa. Yeah, it's on a shield. And on that shield, you don't really see it on the side over here, which really stands for, this is a, a woman here, the, a goddess, that instead of having hair, she has snakes coming out. You remember that thing? Yeah. All paganistic, devilish things. Huh. A woman with living snakes coming out of her head. And of course, on the shield and beside the shield, you can't see it from right there, right there. A great big old snake right there. Right there. Pagan. Pagan. It's interesting They even said those pillars that go up, about a third of the way they talk about that, that the height shows a, I didn't see them on there, but it says that there's a little bulge in those uh, pillars. And it's saying that there's tension on those pillars. You get it? Huh. It gives the impression of a living organism that suffers from the weight it's lifting. Be just like the enemy. Are you still with me? Oh, that dragon, they call it the big dragon painted on the walls, a sea serpent. There's other things where you say, what is all of that about? So maybe you can see a little bit maybe why that ball of fire, as it were, comes and hits directly on this building. The one that she saw with what? A lot of pillars. 
and they have pillars all on the outside, all around them. I forget, what is it, 17 or so down each wall and what, eight across or something like that. on the, And then all in the inside, all kind of pillars up in there. <laughs> Smash. Would it be that God said enough is enough? And all this pagan stuff that you're on and people slipping in and worshiping and, you know, as their God, there is no God. He said in the Bible, there is no God but me. Isn't that right? There's no, I'm the only God. And there comes a time, he said, enough is enough. And so we see the destruction that's coming here. And not only that, we're talking about the city. You think of Nashville, you wouldn't think of it being a highly irreligious, highly pagan place, but it is. The city's all. Oh. Wow. Possibly, as we look at some of these things, we might say, what would be a picture of what exists today? In Scripture, could we find a, a text or something that explains or makes a picture of the judgments of the way they're going in the world today that exists today in our world? I found just one, just a paragraph in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 14 and 15, makes this statement. This is pretty heavy, Isaiah 59, 14, and 15. In other words, in the time that we're living in today, does this fit? Or if not, but get, get, some of you looking a little bit doubtful. Don't, no, please. God is going to say, and it's saying one of these days, that's enough. Can we at least agree on that? He's going to say, it's enough. and how much does it take? If he just looked at me throughout all of life, he's obviously saying, that's enough, Kenny, for Pete's sake. Oh, oh I said Pete's sake. How about you? Wouldn't it be enough if all of our life was saying about the song, you know, we're kind of with, you know, all with him, and then all of a sudden we're against him, and we're doing it, and then we're here, and then we're there, back and forth, and back and forth. They look down and say, it's just not worth it. But he doesn't say that. He said, oh, you're worth it. If there just be one, Mary Lynn, if there's just one, if you're just that one, he said, I, I would do the very same thing. That's how precious you are to him. Isn't that wonderful? I think about that encourages me. That helps me. But also, he said, there's a time. Probation closes. Remember we talked about, and we've read quotes, for every nation and every person, there is an allotted time. Is that right, Herb? There's a lot of time, and it runs out. Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome. Every big nation before has had its time, and it's come to an end. And you, just like the United States, we're coming to an end. And some of these things that we see, yes, could be God-given. Some things we'll look at a little bit later in part three. I'll just challenge you with the great balls of fire coming down. And we'll go back and look a little closer at the two visions that Ellen White had about it and talk a little bit more about some of these immense balls of fire. Could certainly, certainly the judgments of God and certainly could be some exchange of things that we don't want to talk about that could happen that's going to bring about Sunday laws. It's going to bring about, you know, destruction of whole cities and change our whole life as we know it. And really, are we ready for those things? Here's this passage. We're going to close with that two minutes left. Isaiah 59, 14. You can decide if this fits the, 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 the world that we're living in today. Here's what it says. Judgment is turned away backwards. Is it's like there's no judge. What do you mean? And justice standeth afar off. Seems like the guilty are prospering. Remember, God lets these things happen for a while, but first he cuts it off. He's going to show he's God. For truth, notice this. Why is, is, is the judgment turned it seems, way backwards? In other words, it's just it's not coming to pass right now. Why is it put off? And why does there seem to be no justice going on in the world today? Because truth is fallen in the street. And equity cannot enter. Yea, truth, notice this, faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. You depart from evil? Andrew, we was talking about it. When you decide to do what is right, sometimes some of the judgments, as it were, the enemy... Not God's, but he's greater. Isn't that right? We serve one greater than the enemy. Isn't that right? Greater is he, right? Than me, than he, that it is the world. We need not worry about it, but the tests are going to come. The trials are going to come. 
these exchanges that we might see that, again, I, I throw out. You throw back if you want to, because Joel 1.15 at last that day, the day of the Lord is at hand, a destruction from the Almighty, it shall come. Could be some pitiful exchanges that take place. Are we ready for those things that will take place? Our whole life, whole world will change. And the enemy said, at that point in time, he's taken over. The world is mine. Of course, then we have the seven last plug. But I believe these warnings are going to come before probation Closes, and then certainly we'll have worse ones after when the probation. Is that agreeable? Yeah. I think so. These are wake up calls. Lord, have mercy on. Help us to wake up. Oh Lord, let's pray as we close. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us so much. We pray today that people have seen not just oh, it's just warning after warning. I can't take it, but oh, love message, love message. You're saying, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm warning you. These things are going to take place. I'm even pointing out things that will happen and will take place. We have to have faith to believe that God has said we see the gloominess, we see the darkness, we see the, all the stuff that's taking place in the world today. Exchange, as it were, some powers that we have no idea of what's going to happen. Bless us, Lord, we pray. We find our shield or our buckler. We find our safety only in Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you that you love us enough to warn us. Thank you that you said, I want to save you. I want you to spend eternity with me. And if we just will listen and follow, we can spend eternity with Jesus. Because he said to you, your bread and water will be sure. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello and welcome back, friends. The Lord doesn't want any of us to be left unaware of the closing events of this world. This controversy between Christ and Satan will reach a great crescendo before Christ's second advent. Matthew 24 and verse 22 states, and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Praise God for his mercy, his grace, and biblical promises that he has given us throughout his word. Without him, there is no hope. He is our hope. He is our strength. He is our sustainer. Friends, today's message was entitled Great Falls of Fire, Part 2 of 3 with Pastor Kenny Shelton, and it is now available to order for a love gift of just $23 or more. So won't you just pick up the phone and give us a call now here at Behold the Land Ministries and request your three-part series today. We are standing by and we look forward to hearing from you. You may reach us here in the United States by calling 618-942-5044, that is Central Time, or you may mail in your request or financial support for this ministry to keep these programs going across the air throughout the world to Behold the Land Ministries, P.O. Box 2030, Heron, Illinois 62948, you may also email us at contact at BeholdTheLandMinistries.com and we've made ordering and donating easy on our website at BeholdTheLandMinistries.com. Friends, until next time, may our precious Lord continue to richly bless you and yours.